Hi everybody, today we are going to be solving word problems um, that involve quadratic functions. So there are a few different equations that I want you to know um, that you might be using today or on tonight's homework. Um, the first one is, or the first two are actually real equations that you might see um, in a physics class that can be used to mo model when an object is dropped and when an object is thrown. So this is kind of taking into account the effect of gravity and the path of a projectile. So for the first one is when an object is thrown and this um, H sub zero H sub zero or H naught we call it, it stands for the initial height. Oops. Initial height. For the second equation, um, that initial height is the same right here, and this V naught stands for the initial velocity. So those would be things that are given to you um, in the problem. Now you don't need to memorize these formulas, but I would expect you to know how to use them and where to find them in your notes or in the textbook. Um, and the second two are just a refresher. The area of a triangle is one-half base times height, and the area of a square or rectangle is length times width. All right, let's give one of these a try. So this is a juggler tosses a ball into the air. So right off the bat, I know that I'm going to use that second equation we talked about because it's an object being thrown. And we're going to be looking for these two things, um, initial velocity and initial height. So it says the ball leaves the juggler's hand four feet above the ground. So that would be our initial height and has an initial velocity of 30 feet per second. So that's our initial velocity. So now we have our, our equation set up. This is our quadratic equation. So it says, the juggler catches the ball when it falls back to a height of 3 feet. How long is the ball in the air? So they're asking us to find the t value when h is 3. So we're going to substitute 3 right here. And then we need to solve for t. Well, this is a quadratic equation, so we know a lot of different methods. And in this case, let's start by setting our equation equal to 0 and taking a look. So in this case, we are going to want to use the quadratic formula to solve this. So let's go through it. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a C all over 2A. So that would give us T equals negative 30 plus or minus the square root of 964 all over negative 32. Now, in this case, we could um, simplify this radical um, to give us a more accurate um, estimation. So we, for real life problems it is more useful to have a decimal rather than a radical because if you tell someone a radical measurement they're not really going to know what that means. So if you plug this into your calculator here's what you would get. Negative 0 0.33 0 0.033 or about 1.9. So now you have to take a second and look at your two answers. Do they both make sense? Now, would it make sense to have a negative amount of time? No. So in this case, this answer is not what we will use. Um, however, 1.9 is a perfectly reasonable answer. So our answer would be 1.9 seconds. Now on a test, um, you guys know that you won't be able to use a calculator, so we'll be very clear what we want you to do there. But I just wanted to kind of give you an idea um, of what the real life answer would be. Alright, let's try another one. Um, here we are given a rectangle. They tell us that the total, total area is 35 inches squared and that the two sides are 2x plus 1 and x plus 2 and they want us to find x. Well, if they tell us the area, let's use our area formula. So we know that area equals length times width. So 35 equals 2x plus 1 
times x plus 2. And it does not matter which one uses the length or the width. Now, this is a quadratic equation. Let's solve it. So first I'm going to need to multiply out on the right. So we have 2x squared plus 2x plus x is plus 5x plus 2. And then we need to set our equation equal to 0. Okay, um, from here I look at this and it's a trinomial, looks like I might be able to factor it. So I'm going to try using the bottom up method. So I can use 11 and negative 6. But please don't forget to divide out that 2. So we have 0 equals 2x plus 11 and x minus 3. So using the zero product property, I can see that x would equal negative 11 halves or 3. Now once again, you need to look at the equation. Um, do these answers make sense? Now, if you plugged in this x value into... Um, this length, you would get a negative answer, and it does not make sense. It's actually impossible to have a negative length. So in terms of the real life application, that answer does not work. Now you should double check to make sure that um, 3 gives you positive answers, and it does, which means that x is equal to 3. There you go. Okay. Um, let's try one more type of problem together. Um, so this says that you have a garden that is 10 by 11 feet. And you have a little pathway around it, uh, which we don't know the length of, so we call it x. So it's a uniform pathway. It's the same width all the way around. And they tell us that the total area of the garden and the pathway together, meaning total, um, is 156 feet squared. Um, so our job is to find x, okay? We want to find x. So if we're given the total area, well, then we want to set up um, an equation for area. So once again, we know that area equals length times width because it's a rectangle. Now let's talk about the length, or so area, 156, equals. So my length is 11 plus the two pathways on both sides. So it would be 11 plus x plus x, which is 11 plus 2x. And then my width would be 10 plus x plus x, which is 10 plus 2x. So you have, to be, you have to make sure to really understand the picture in the scenario so you're not just adding the pathway on one side but on both sides. Um, now at this point, I'm going to ask that you pause the video and try to finish solving this on your own. Okay, thank you for giving that a try. Let's have a look. Um, so you can see that you need to multiply, see, multiply out your equation, set your equation equal to zero. From here, there's a number of different um, ways you could have solved this, but I noticed that I could divide out two, and then I tried factoring. So I used the bottom up method here. Um, I factored it, and I used the zero product property, and I got two answers. Now my negative answer would just not make sense. You can't have a negative width, so I have to use my positive answer, which is one foot. And that is all for today.